Alright guys, it is August 3rd, Thursday, around 9.30pm, market time, eastern time, also market time. Alright, so let's look at the ES, yeah, so what happened here guys, look at that, right? We get that sell-off that I was saying we're expecting, right? So I was expecting this to hit... You see how this like line, the red line, that's like the pretty much the top that I thought. But usually when you hit this top, you will get a little squeeze, like a couple percent, right? So for that reason, I want to really short around this area here, not around, like, I mean, this was the short right there. But again, it was more ideal if it came here. Well, it didn't come there. Obviously, I shorted it here. But I, the thing is, because it didn't do that, it had that extra bounce now. Look at this, right? We get that massive sell-off, right? And now this is like aftermarket, this green bar, right? That's the after the market. So we're getting the bounce after market. But I, like I said, right? I said, if this didn't have the juice, which it didn't, like this showed that the juice was gone. And then finally, we're going back into this area. And look, it like it got to the top of this of this uh, area right there. So basically, missed my target, you know, by like nothing, like a dollar or whatever, right? Five dollars pretty much. Yeah, five dollars. <laughs> so... On a four thousand, on a four thousand six hundred dollar stock uh, instrument, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I said happened, right? So let's look at it into intraday and see why this day is bouncing, right? Let's explain that, okay? So now we see this is today right so basically yesterday we had the sell-off day nothing the institutions didn't support this didn't didn't defend it so they took it down another notch right and now we're under the price right so basically we pretty much gap down right and then we bounce because when you have a gap down that's not good because there's no trading in between the gap, right? Like there, like this, like these, like from this area to this area, there, there is trading, but it's like so low volume. Like you can see here, no volume at all, right? Because it's like it's aftermarket, right? Anything from these red to uh, from red to to yellow is aftermarket, pretty much. I consider, except I guess you can say that this is, I, it, but it's nowhere near as m the same volume that you get u during the U.S. session. It's the best session to trade. And for that's for a reason because the contracts are flowing in like crazy and here there's nothing compared like it's nothing there was like almost after market till give me a second uh, let's find out actually till pre-market there's like 300 K volume in contracts right and then from pre-market yeah, you have 1 million you see what I'm saying like there's 1.1 million contracts tr uh, traded during the day and there's only 300 contracts trading during night. So basically, one third of the volume happens during night. Sometimes even sometimes even one fourth, even less. So for that reason, like it's easy to for the algos to grind the price up down because people are sleeping and nobody's like really trading against the algo or like you know what I'm saying. Like there's not enough unless you're some type of big player that found out something during the night or something like that, and now you need to exit before people wake up. I mean, it could. I mean. Yeah, that could happen, but uh, we don't see it happen that often like that lately. Anyways, because we've, we've been we've been pushing so hard because of the um, because of the uh, like this whole bullish movement for no reason, right? Like it's just funny to me because there's no reason for to be for us to be this bullish. It's complete, like it's just a complete joke. So, anyways, uh, uh. It doesn't matter. Like most of the times when you trade and you try to use logic, you're going to find that it's a complete joke. Nothing makes sense, right? So it's like you just have to know that that's trading, right? Like you can be right on your uh, ideas and everything, but the market can do whatever the fuck it wants to do pretty much, right? It ma it just matters how much. Um, it just matters pretty much uh T8 doesn't matter. It only takes like one guy to fucking destroy the price, right? So you just have to be very when uh, when that person shows up to the market, right? And right now, I don't know. We're not seeing those people show up because I think they sized out here. Majority of the positions, right? I think they sized it out from here. Since, since we started entering this box, right? They ended up sizing out 5.5 million uh, sh uh, contracts. Now, 
that might not be all them, but like, yeah, that they had all, enough time to get the hell out and just now bring the price down. Now, obviously, we're bouncing back because we're really extending over uh, the neutralized zone, which is this zone right here, right? This zone right here, that's the neutralized zone. This little cloud that you see, that's the neutralized zone, basically. Basically, no trading in that zone. But when the price overextends, it will come back and it will extend this way. It will come back. It acts like a magnet, pretty much. It just shows you the average. Like, pretty much, I use it as a as knowing who's underwater right now. Right now, technically, the bulls are under uh, are underwater heavily. Not heavily, but like significantly. And um, the bulls are nowhere. Uh, the bulls are just trying to fuck, uh, save the price here, right? And this is a nice area to save it because it's on the bottom of the range that I thought was relevant. And then we reached the top. And now we're back at the bottom. So when the price gets to the bottom, it's better to go long than go short. Now, if this doesn't hold, and I don't think it will, I mean, I think it might maybe touch the neutralized zone and come back down. But right now, I'm thinking we're going to see something like this. We'll see what happens overnight. Like, it's probably not going to do much. And then probably this is going to come back like this, something like that. And then once the price gets in here, and there's no type and no volume to bring it up, and I don't see a reason why there will be. But, you know, I could be wrong. And then it will do something like this, right? It will come down in this zone here. That's what I think uh, a healthy correction should be for this particular wave that we're in, right? Let's so let's go back on, on the 10 minute. You can see it here, right? I'm expecting for this to hit like that and come back down and here. We could double bottom here and come back up, right? And then maybe it's going to reject here, but we don't know that. And right now, like, we are under the big volumes. Uh, we are under the big volume. We are... Uh, and a bounce zone, but if that bounce zone don't have the juice, because I think a lot of the juicers are st uh, are stuck in there, right? Whoever like uh, whoever was going long, whoever was going long, they're stuck in this zone right here, right? Most of the people, or like this big thing from here, right? So most of the people are stuck in this zone here, right? They're like stuck in this zone right here, like that, something like that, right? They're stuck in there, and now. I mean, if you're buying this, you're basically helping these people to get out of their bad positions. And for that reason, like, I mean, you could buy this, but you have to size out at the neutralized zone and then probably size most of it out here and then see what happens after. And if it actually breaks out, you should probably size out. And when the price comes back in, that's, that's when you buy the dip. And here, there's a dip here, but it's, I don't know. It's just not something that I want to take a part of. I just want to see this hit here and then go down and I'm going to be shorting that for, I would say the next, I, I, I actually, I don't know, because we had these two months being super bullish, like I don't know if, I, if, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, if um, August is going to be bearish, like, I sorry, I don't know if August is going to be bullish again, because most of the times, like in the past, when I, sh when I trade, August is the worst because it's kind of like boring to trade and there's nothing to do and like but like then you get some crazy runners or something like that right they blow up all the shorts that are impatient and shorting and uh i've been on the receiving end quite a bit right and uh for that reason like i'm super careful in august because it's so fucking boring and then you're just gonna want to want to fish a you know a trade you know like you can look at any chart and find the space to make a trade but it's not ideal if you actually want to make money for the long term so you got to be super rigid about your areas that you want to take your trades right and you want to be super rigid when your when your risk gets hit and that's it like you know trading is pretty simple but it's you know like the mechanics of trading are simple but the actual people uh get emotional and whatnot and uh Lose all their money gambling, right? So if you don't gamble and you just keep uh, keep a strategy that makes sense, right? Uh, and it works and it's it's back tested, uh, you should be able to do well, right? And yeah, it's just a grind game over time, and then uh, eventually it becomes second nature. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna leave it here. Tomorrow's Friday, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.